I jump and am happy about the works of Hibbelziwa and those who come through his hand excellently. He protected him, strengthened him, equipped him, blessed him, and spread of his mercy upon him. He gave shine to Hibbelziwa, then called Sitil and strengthened him and spoke to him. Keep, keep, Sitil Uthra, that your speech is that is not that of the demons. Let your speech be our speech, be connected with us, and don't get cut off. He gave Sitil light, then called Anush, strengthened him, and spoke to him. You were blessed by the four Uthras who sit in mutual splendor. They baptized you with their baptism and clothed you with garments of light. He gave Anush brightness and gave him rich splendor, just like his two brothers. Then the great lamp that shines over all the world spoke. She spoke, and he spoke to the Lord of Greatness. The name of this lamp is Jatir Jathrun. She has 360 names. She spoke to him. Who is this shine? Who is this light? Who is this brightness? To this, uh, he replied to her, This gloss belongs to Hibble, this light belongs to Sitil, this brightness belongs to Anush Uthra, which is vast and endless. The light of light sealed them. He sealed them in a perfect way. He called Silmai and Nidbai, laid his rights on them, blessed them with his blessing, and spoke to them. We are pleased with this picture, which created and uh, turned. They then called Ram Raza and Adakas Mana and his helpers. They created a cloud for them so that the Uthras could make their form. They did not look and said to them, the Uthras sang hymns in their glory, and you great ones rejoice in your enlightenment. The light cloud rejoices and flaunts. As a man came, he sat down, and the light king sealed his helpers, his brothers, who are his sons. He sealed uh, Sindiriawis, the great Jordan of life in which no one will be baptized. Uh, and he said to them, We have been blessed by the goodness of the great life, and they put your mercy in order. We created the great Jordan of life and the 360 Jordans in which Hibbelziwa lived and was baptized. Then Manda Dehaya spoke to the great life that made him. He said, May we have this firstborn son whom I create and send to the world of evil. Then his image said to him, Do not take too early an end. How can you, my son, name it? To which he replied to her, If I don't, my son, who shall call him my son? He then spoke to Hibbelziwa, the head of the whole family. How we created you, so create the Uthras, your brothers, so that they may go to the treasure and be careful of life. When you go to the darkness, take the power and the swift dove. Then Hibbelziwa arose, went and subdued the uh, common ones. He did something to the mighty fiends that they hated. He saw Rutha Kadusha pregnant with the lapsed fiend. She was pregnant with the king of darkness, and they say, We want the lords of all worlds, the upper, middle, and lower, to be. I saw the king of darkness, as my parents told me. I submitted Rutha and Hewath, the wife, the mother of the invalid. I submitted the king of darkness, whose mother says, we, they want to be the masters of all worlds. I created a great compaction and set up above him where I see the world straighten. I cursed Hewath the wife, the mother of the lapsed, and said to her, Your curse and your blessing be yours only, a fraction of your sons, and Tahil Uthra shall enter this world and straighten it. It was only as a result of the plan of Joshamin that I came to you. I came to you and did something hateful to the darkness, because without I have done what my parents ordered me to do, because a son who does not listen to the speech of his parents will be here at uh, it will be here and be held back. However, I obeyed and accepted and did uh, not hide in the wind what my parents ordered me. Yes, I listened to your speech. I accepted them and went and judged them in the treasure of the Uthras, who kept the treasure, the pillars of the whole palace. Kushda I took in my rights and went to the world of darkness. Abel, firm in faith, the others kept themselves in the world of darkness back. Those who have stood firm in the faith rise up and look at the place of light. Those who did not stand firm in the faith will be on the day finally put to an end. Manda Dehaya spoke and said, This battle that took place took place because of Yoshamin. For everyone who builds a house 
uh, and uh, before that, Amaskia, anyone who prays this treatise and does not, uh, and the hearts and lips of believers will be turned away from the way before him and will be cut off. Anyone who has a sincere heart and by reciting the lips of believers, one will become a forgiver of sins and uh, will have um, forgiveness of offenses. Praise be to Manda Dehaya and his helpers, Hibble, Sittal, and Anush, and Silmai and Nidbai, and life is victorious for all eternity. Fifth Book In the name of the strange life from the worlds of light, which he it is above all works, this is the mystery, the book, and the secret prayer, because life hid the speech of Manda Dehaya when he spoke before the mana and his image and expressed the revelation before life that a deva from Siniavis, the lower earth of darkness, aspired to ascend. When Manda Dehaya said this, life and the mana and his image of him, why are you sitting there, you treasurer and our eldest son? Get up, get down, and uh, go do what you wish. When Manda Dehaya heard this from them, Manda Dehaya bowed, stretched out before them, and said to them, I want to get up, and the treasurer, your son, and uh, the plant that you planted, uh, the image that you have formed from your hiding place, your egg, from that Jordan whom you attracted, and from the Tana and the vein to call your place. When Manda Dehaya spoke this, his voice was heard in all worlds, and uh, they listened carefully. He got up and baptized and brought his son to those and his likeness, the father. Where are we going? asked uh, his son. On uh, this he said to him, Come on, come on, I want to give you the image of Mana, and Mana, and show his great hidden image, which was revealed to all Uthras in 365 hidden vast worlds, and eggs of light it is hidden. Then his son, who is his brother, said to Manda Dehaya, Where I am afraid of this first image, that image of the Mana, and the Mana of his hidden image, which is hidden from all the world, to look. To which his father, who is his brother, replied to him, I have sent them with a swift step, and I have come to you. Why are you sitting now, beloved son, there to the man? The splendor of life acted and had success and passed as a name. Now get up. Let us go and see the face of those honored manas. When his father said this, that gentle, steady son uh, liked it. He, he, uh, he took hold of his father by the right hand and went with him until he reached the hiding and the laying eggs of beings. Tremendous glory came. When he, the first life, and Mana and his image said to him, What do you, Yawar Kabar, son of Manda Dehaya, who opens our foreheads, uh, uh, the hop, uh, uh, to have us do? Uh, to this he replied to them, well, you searched and found, search again and again. I got up and brought your son, since they said to him, Open up, lead him in, and bring him so that we may, and he sees us. And he arose and went and brought him, and brought him before those venerable manas. When Hibble, the future mana, entered them, he was afraid of them, because their splendor was miraculous. Their light was bright, and no one is able to see her figure because of her shine, and their light is great. When the two uh, great manas and the first image caught sight of me, they put me in front of them, kissed and tasted me. However, I stretched, and I went before them, and I worshipped and praised that image. A thousand years ago I stretched out in front of it until that man with his right hand reached out to me. He took hold of me, lifted me up from my position and said, Get up, Mana Hibbelziwa, whom we have called. Don't be afraid. Also the image of the great Mana uh, put his hand on me. Hibbelziwa. Then they opened their mouths and said, Why do you sit here? Get up. We want to baptize you in 360,000 Jordans and with 360 uh, garments. They covered him with covers, one of which each was more miraculous than the other. They got up, baptized him in 360,000 uh, Jordans and spoke secret names about him, one of which each was more miraculous than the other. They guarded me a thousand myriads endless years. I stayed with them in that hidden egg until I grew up and became like them. Then my father laid his hand on me, Hibbel Yawar. He had his name Yawar and created a word for me, extended and endlessly. In that world he created ten thousand times a thousand lights for me and created for me uh, huge inner Jordans 
in each individual he created 360,000 Uthras for me in each individual Shkinta he created 360,000 Uthras for me 360,000 Shkintas each world was different than the other and her brilliance her enlightenment and her praise was miraculous my father gave me his robe with which he was created the robe in which he had received baptism was also uh, he gave me a borrowed mystery which is guarded by the great ones and uh, their language go go our son and our image whose splendor is miraculous the same is greater than that of all the Uthras the place you go to uh, heavily wait for you in those worlds of darkness uh, generations over you will stay there for generations until we forget you your figure will stay there until we read you the funeral mass when he uh, heard this from his parents he bowed and stretched and stood before them and said to them well done uh, with you my parents uh, strength and the great mystery that is kept by you with thanks to the strength of my father Manda Dehaya well I want to open up and go to the place where you send me so Hibbalmana Yawar spoke. His father goes and comes with him, and his two brothers go with him. They read hymns, prayers, and orders of prayer. Her heart hoped before her father, and her father hopped his inner self, and he said, There is no one like me to whom his parents, the great manas, such hidden sprouts evoked and created have, have done. Her father uh, leaves and wanders with them until he reaches the place of the two. There is a boundary between light and darkness. His father uh, is then uh, then said to him, Go, my son Hibble, and your two brothers who accompany you. They should come with the. Uh, they should come with you and your uh, to the place where your father prepared you. To this, Hibble replied to his father, the pure mana, someone whom his father arms, seals, baptizes, and strengthens needs to not be afraid of the uh, evil ones. His father uh, did not hug him and kissed him not. Then he said to his father, if you hugged me, come, uh, uh, if you hugged me, uh, become very become very sad about me when his father heard this from hibble he bowed he strengthened and strengthened him his father then set off and went to the mana and his image i you are hibble now said well done with you my parents strength and with the power of the great mystery and the helpers who helped me i want to descend to the darkness as i now descend and put my feet in the black water and on the walls that separate darkness and light they retreated a thousand miles in front of me and i managed to get into the first world of darkness in which ruha dwelt in that world i lived for a thousand and a thousand years and no one knew about me and that i was there in this world i was hidden from their eyes then the great mystery that had been given to me said, We want to go down. Then I got under this world and came in the world of the great Zartai Zartanai, in which things um, his form resembles. I don't know. Then I said to them, You see, Uthras, my brother, what thing does the form of this Zartai Zartanai resemble? I spoke then to him, Let this form of yours be bound and held down, tender Zartanai, um, and that your... Uh, you and that of your wife Amamit. Uh, years after years and generations after generations I was there and they did not know about me that I lived there in their world light being uh, there with me and we carried orders of prayer and prayers and masses for the dead and her heart leaped at her enlightenment and her praise day by day this rises to life and mana and its great first image of the created uh, life i told myself that when uh, life my father and therefore i do not sit in front of these figures uh, needing to be afraid then i left zartai zartanai and left and went to other worlds those of the hag and mag the two manas of darkness whose magic is greater than that of all beings of darkness. From the world of the Zartai, Zartanai to the world of the Hag and Mag are a thousand miles without number, I spoke. Who brought me here? And you, my foot, who let you climb up here? I went and found these two mighty manas of darkness, Hag the man and uh, 
Mag, the woman, in which that world was sixty and a thousand myriad years. In that world I saw her and knew uh, what was in and went before her heart. I then left her, broke up, and came to another world, um, that of Gaf and Gafau, the mighty giants of darkness, uh, the source of the black hissing bubbling water, emerged which boils like boiling cauldrons, bubbles and rises to a height. And from the world of the Hag and Mag to the world of the Gaf and Gafan are a hundred thousand myriad miles without number and account. When I saw Gaf and Gafan, their shape is inverted shapes. They are like dragons, and their wives are like salamanders. Said I to they, You are bound in fettered giants of darkness, and let your body be bound with the great fetter with which the smithy is bound. The fiends uh, are held captive. Be bound by your sorcery and your deceit which you drive. Tied up are your wives, the Liliths, the Salamanders, and they are ugly, twisted and twisted, and those who chatter and no one can bear. I said to the Uthras, my brothers, have you seen which things these decrepit giants are like? Uh, that's what my brothers said, the Uthras. How far are the limits of these worlds of darkness, and how numerous these giants? I've been in front of your eyes a thousand times, a thousand myriads of years without end and number hidden. Then he spoke to me, the great mystery that was given to me. Why are we sitting in this place? Let's go up, let's go up and see what we want to do. We then set out from the world of the Gaf and the Gafan. We wander and go to the world of Anatan and his wife Kin, the queen, the mistress of the darkness, which was called Mother of Darkness, which came from the black, the water is turbid, bubbling, perishable, consuming one another, who created all the worlds of darkness. From the day when we went to the dark world of the warlike giant Anatan that they had created, it was a thousand by a thousand miles a wide end and loose way. I spoke to the great mystery that had been given to me, Seal, Kin, and Anatan, the giants of darkness. When you uh, tell you exactly which things they are like, we sat uh, with them for years and generations without number and calculation. All the beings uh, that were attached to me, the Uthras and the Shkintas, they were there with hymns and orders of prayer, prayers and mass for the dead. Her heart rejoiced in them and uh, hopped with joy. Also, I was delighted with their joy and the helpers that my parents created for me and from their court that they had joined me. I spoke as follows. I am sitting by the mana and his image. Our heart is bouncing and throbbing that my enlightenment and praise is increasing day by day, hour by hour. For before the hidden mana and his image and before the great hidden first uh, nitufta, which existed before the worlds of life, when I looked and examined these worlds, I said, It will be uh, given me a day when I rise to my father and sit down with him. I and the Uthras, my brothers uh, who are with me, have come to me since I will receive instruction through knowledge and knowledge, enlightenment and praise, which my parents then they searched and found out about it. Alas, I spoke thus, my brothers, and the great mystery spoke that was added to me. Now we want to go up. Why are we sitting in this place without knowing how many years without number we are sitting here? We want to open the gate of the three kings. The fire do not consume that place where the dust and water is, the place where that water is, the place where the generation of darkness will come to an end and under which there is no one left. When we had gained clarity and knowledge about this and that we opened the gates, we opened the first gates and saw and looked at the great Sedum, the grandson of darkness. We saw uh, uh, that they were not like the Devas, the giants of darkness. I, Hibil, now assumed a tall and beautiful form, sat down before him and said, Well, in your name, great mystery, in the names of the hidden first life, hidden in the hidden place, in the name of the mana and his image, in the name of my father, Mandadahaya, and with his enlightenment of the Uthras who are with me, they are given to me as helpers, they who are given to me in these worlds of darkness, where my parents sent me. Well, with I speak to the warlike Sedum, king of the dark world, in the joy I felt and spoke and said to him, Peace with you, warlike Sedum, king of the world. He didn't see me at first, but when I greeted him, he turned around, saw me, raised his eyes, lifted up the waves of his countenance, and spoke. 
peace be with you, you man of beautiful figure. I then spoke to him. Just one word I want to talk to you. Uh, to this he replied, Say, handsome man whose figure is beautiful and bright. Then I said to him, A son who comes forth from you, who from your tribe and your root, I want to start a fight and create turmoil in your world. What do you say about him? On this uh, that Sadum was disgusted and said, I don't know anything. Get down under me. There's someone older than me. From the day I came to him until the time uh, since I descended to the great uh, uh, gave it was a hundred thousand years then i made myself a man who is more beautiful than her and he placed me in front of give without him knowing that i was approaching then i greeted him to which he replied peace be with you you man of beautiful figure what do you want from me i spoke to him a son who comes from you your tribe and your root who wants to fight against the worlds of light. What do you say about him? To this he replied, Get down under me, for I know nothing. From the day I left him and set out to the days since I arrived at Karkum, the great meat mountain, I was sixty thousand myriads of years in that way. How vast and endless! I beheld that croon, the great mountain of flesh, where there are no bones. His appearance is like dust, and the water that is under him is dust and resembles the dark cloud. I then approached him, saw him, but remained hidden from his eyes. How many years, I told myself, what should I do, and uh, what am I, uh, why am I talking to this man, this giant croon, the great mountain of meat? Then I began to speak and said to him, Peace be with you, first, uh, uh, first born king of darkness, croon, the great meat mountain. He did not raise his face, but said, Who is this man who has revealed my name and understood my sign? On it I told him, I am Hibble, life has sent me here, and I came to you a thousand times a thousand years, endless and numerous generations. Years after years I have come to you. He spoke then to himself, It is life that does not pass, and the shine and the light that is not cut off. What did it command you? he asked. To this I replied to him. Life gave me the task and said to me, Go and say to him, A son who is of you, the root of your tribe and your consort, want to stir up, throwing the worlds of light against us. What do you say about him? Then he said, Go, or I'll devour you. Then uh, he was so, I was sitting, Hibbelziwa, in a... Uh, in a trough of swords, sabers, steel skewers, knives, and blades, and told him, Devour me, since he said, Now I'll devour you, and devoured me halfway. Then he spit me out and threw me out. He spewed drool from his mouth because of the intensities. Uh, the liver and the kidneys were cut up for him, which is, uh, uh, what is this, he cried. Uh, did you do to the man who is... Uh, uh, do with the man who has come to me, whom, uh, whom has sent the light. Then he turned to me and said, You are strong, we are weaklings. You are gods, we are men. You are big, we are small. I then said to him, Come on and give me, um, and, and, uh, give me a pub. He stood and swore to me on the day he was created. I will, uh, I will do not to deceive you, but I will go to my treasure house and tell you and bring a passport from my treasure house. Then he got up and brought me a passport. Then he brought me the signet ring that was hidden in his treasure house, on which the name of the great uh, darkness was written and depicted, which was hidden, whom he had not seen from the day he was created, and said, Well, I grant you that all beings who have seen, if you show them this passport, seal it. When he gave it to me, I took it and hid it in seven walls. Then I climbed up and came to his brother, the great desired. I showed him, and he sealed it. When he confirmed uh, that pass, he put on uh, the seal of his brother. Then took him and ascended to the great Sadum, the giant, who lies there in his world and fidgets. He is sitting on the fire, and the fire serves him. I showed it to him and spoke to him. See the passport that I brought to you from your parents. I got and showed it to him, and he sealed it. Uh, see, I said to him, uh, what your parents sent you. Then he said, Blessed be the day you came. I then left him and ascended to those upper worlds. I sealed the gate in front of Sudum. In that world I had a thousand times a thousand for years.
uh, have I sat. Then I approached the world of Anatan and Kin and stayed there. I have been in that world for years. What should I do? I wondered. Then I approached the Kin by taking the shape of Anatan, accepted as her husband, and said to her, On, show me uh, from what we emerged, from what we were formed and emerged. Then she arose and showed me the great fountain from which she had arisen. When I saw that spring of black water, there was a uh, Mara and a Gimra in it, which lay and fidgeted in that spring. Then the great mystery that had been given to me said, This Mara and Gimra is the firmness of the worlds of darkness. Then it uh, spoke to me like that. I blinded her eyes, made her ears and uh, deafened, and remained hidden from her eyes. That's when I grabbed the Gimra and Mara, and she didn't see me that I had packed it. She was lying down, stretched, and looked for me. Where did you go? It asked her at me. She calls for me and says, Come, I tell you. But I left them. I came and sealed the gate of that world and rose up over the latches and the keys that were different from all the other keys. Then we were happy, me and the worlds and the eons who are with me. We sing hymns and rejoice. Our heart rejoices in light and praises for what we have brought from kin, who uh, Sumkak is great, the great one that arose from its root, kin, the grandmother of Ur, in front of all the worlds of darkness. When I had locked the gates and moved the bolts, I spoke and found out about the gate three secret names that no one from their place, the names Hamziwa, Nuhurziwa, and Lufafan uh, Nura Rabbah, these secret names well kept with me, so that these gates they cannot be separated, and no one can open them. Then I ascended to that world which is above the worlds of Sumkak, the great pearl, from the day I ascended to the great Gaf and Gafan, the father of our worlds. Um, they sit there together, laughing and joking with each other. Your mother kin is sitting with you and says to you, On, we want to look at our beauty and our charm. We want to see what we haven't seen yet. When she spoke to them in this way, they became restless and said, They kicked and they said to her, Show us what we should do. And uh, she said to her daughter, Ruha, Come, we want you uh, to your brother Gaff, uh, to the woman. When she uh, spoke to her like that, uh, she liked it, both of them. They stood, they came one to another. He took them before them, then took his uh, bachelors and kissed her. He said to her, Like you, Ruha, my sister, there is none. From that day on, when you were with Ur, the lord and giant of the worlds of darkness, and became pregnant, then they said to each other, Come on, we want our mother to call Kin and our father Gaff, that we are communicating with each other. As he thus spoke to her, she got up, went with him, and spoke to Kin and Gaff. Uh, see what we did. Thereupon Kin said to them, Hail for you to do this as we have done. I, you are, was hidden from their eyes, and they did not see me, that I was sitting with them, me and the great hidden mystery, as if it was hidden from them. I then took the form of one of them, but I was more beautiful as of all of them, more glorious than all of them. I then went there, approached Kin, and he said, uh, and said to her, Peace be with you, great mother, mother of all worlds. She turned around, caught sight of me, and I kindled love and fire in her heart. Then she said, Peace be with you, our great one, uh, uh, of, uh, O great companion. And then I took her by the hand and said to her, How many you have daughters so that you can make me your son-in-law, and I am in this world with you for a while. <coughs> When I thus spoke to her, she rejoiced, and her heart rejoiced, and that I should become her son-in-law. She grabbed me with the right and went to the gaff. Peace be with you, I said to him, you mountain and giant over all of us, you king of this world. He did not understand what I was saying to him. Uh, so uh, said to him, uh, greetings from the man who is more beautiful than all of us. Then he jumped up from his throne, embraced, and spoke to me, and uh, said, Blessed be thy coming, O King, our Lord. What do you want? However, I did not speak to him, but she said to him, A woman he wants from you. Come on, let's give it to him. So he asked her, Who do we want to give him? To which she replied to him, We want to give him the great one who is more beautiful than he is. When they both spoke like that, I took off the ring and threw it at her. She saw the ring I threw at her and was about... Uh, 
and uh, was about the ring which I threw at her. Who is there, she says, who is like me, the man who uh, wooed me, threw me a ring, a ring like no other in our world. Woe, in, our, uh, in ours there is no such ring as a whole, uh, as a whole uh, sweetheart. Then her mother said to her, hide yourself uh, from him until your wedding celebrations. Gaff in turn said to him, oh, uh, do what the men do. We want to marry Zahrel with the beautiful man the uh beautiful when uh w we are all there uh hail sir we said to him uh gaff that this man has arrived at your place they then got up and went to the egg the place that from which they came out she then spoke to him gaff on we want to prepare the wedding for her and marry her he gaff set up for his uh bed down and hit the pegs for the wedding tent he uh invited everyone and called together the angels and giants of that place then they came to her with gold silver Pyrian and wreaths and brought golden cups for them they came by saying we want to go go and see that groom who celebrates wedding with zariel Around uh, me they took a silk robe, wrapped me in blankets of all kinds of colors, lifted me and them up, and uh, put them on uh, the golden bed. They stretched a veil over the bed, lifted me in the height, and sat me down on the bed, and said to me, Rejoice, Lord, our wife, the wife we have given you. They stir, they stir in a porridge and bring it in front of me. They hold it down and say, Lord, eat and drink wine. However, when they talked to me like that, I laughed at them and said, What do the sons of darkness do to whom it is not revealed? And it is clear that I do not eat any food and do not drink any drinks. All that they drift only happens to reveal their secret, so that they themselves do not overpower us. I said to them, Indeed, I have ate and drank. They then left me, went there, and wrapped themselves in a huge cloud of darkness. I taste Zariel, for I said to myself inwardly, From you shall the secrets of darkness be revealed. However, she remains in front of me veiled. Then came the time to visit me. You kin came to me, and kicked and bowed down with a deep bow, and said, What have you done, our son and lord? What should I do? I replied to her, uh, You then, he went to her daughter, and said to her, Does he have you as a wife uh, taken? I am not a woman yet, uh, she said to her. Then her mother kin said to her, Is he missing the manhood? Her daughter replied to her, He has the manhood. She got up from her daughter, came to me, and said, Why did you not take your wife? To which I replied to her, um, In our world a man takes his wife when they get married, only after seven years. Do whatever you want, she said. Then I ponder with the great mystery and speak. The seven years of which I have spoken to the kin make seven and a thousand myriad years, confuse her heart and her insides, and get lost uh, in her eyes. What I told him uh, it did. We stayed there for years and generations, about uh, generations. I said to kin, what have you become? What did you be? Uh, what have you become and created? To this she replied to me, We were taken out of the Tana and the planting of darkness and from all areas of the black water. Well done, I said to her. Show me what you are made. Uh, uh, show me what you have uh, made to become. Then she showed me the strength and firmness of darkness and the hidden mystery of those mighty fiends, the giants, the darkness that is preserved. She showed me a source. Among them was no one, uh, no one knew the extent of that source. Just me, the extent and depth of that source that was revealed and known. In that spring there was a mirror in which they looked at their faces, and after that they knew what to do. I hid this one from her eyes took him and kept him. She looked for him and did not find him. Uh, da said to you, what should I uh, start with? Where our firmness and our strength uh, should we go? What are you looking for? I asked Kin. But she uh, became uh, enclosed in her inner thoughts and she did not speak to me. Then I left her and came to Zariel. Where have you been, my lord? She asked me. I tasted her and said to her, I was with your parents. Very nice, she said, that you were that you went to them. I then went to uh, rest, took the form of her brother, Gaff, and said to her, Come on, we want to go to your parents. Where are you? 
She asked me, then I said to her, Behold, in that world which is over, it's up to us. On the day that Gaff had gone to her, she became pregnant. I said to her, I want to go and be... Uh, I want to go and be your sister Zariel, looking for a man who has come to a man. I then went to that Zariel, then a figure was formed between me and her, and became like me. Then I said to the great mystery that was with me, Enter into the treasure chamber of the heart, enter the Zariel, and, uh, and, and, uh, leave, leave her back. I then took her to her sister. We go there, we and the manas of my company, and Ruha knew not that the 360 myriads of thousands of beings of light were with me. Ruha with me, and I said to her, You are with the firstborn son, pregnant. Ruha was delighted with what I told her. We aim and go to that upper world, a wide end, and loose away. She said, I am in pain. So I said to her, You'll be here soon. Uh, soon you will go there. When I go to the world of Zartai Zartanai, I closed the gate of the Gaf and Gafan and shifted the locks and keys. Uh, uh, Beswo, I threw the rings at uh, them and spoke about those gates, the hidden names, the names Hananel, Hanel, and Samir, these hidden names of those uh, those forgotten manas. I said to her, Go, rest. And we went into that world, the Zartai Zartanai. Years without end we were there until we entered this world and succeeded. She exclaimed, What are we doing that we are not yet at our uh, parents uh, ha have arrived? I said to her, Now we're getting there. With a quick step we moved there and climbed up to their world, which is located above Zartai Zartanai. When we left him, I closed the gates, moved all the locks and keys, and talked about those gates, um, other hidden names, the name Aksar, Aksar Uubad, and Kasar Yawarziwa, these hidden names that are with me. Then I said, Blessed be the man who brought me out of that place, from the vein of darkness, from the depths of the Finsternis. And to Ruha I said, What do you want? That's when she said, What I want from you? Where are my parents? She replied. I told her, Now I will take you there and show you where they are. Then I said to the great mystery, Blind their eyes, deafen their ears, and confuse their insides. What I told the man who stayed with me and said, he carried out and did not change anything about it. <clears throat> he confused their insides, blinded their eyes, deafened their ears, and it was as if she didn't exist. I surrounded your world with walls that no one from your place uh, can move. She was lying there in that world looking for herbs to eat them. You uh, who wore her. I now speak to the worlds and eons which have been added to me uh, uh, here. Rejoice, be well-tempered and firm and submit to your parents. What we did is good. Now well, we want to ascend and go to our parents. We want the great manas to look. We want to look at the mana and its likeness and the great nitufta from which we emerged. We move there and wander. We carry with a pure voice and enlightenment secret hymns and prayer orders. Our inner hopes with great joy and our voice rises to the life and mana and his image. When we reached the border towns, we opened we opened the gates of light and ascended in front of my father. He, the mana, and his image came to meet us, called to me, and spoke to me. Yes, here comes Hibble Mana, whose splendor is richer than that of all the Uthras. My father embraced me, the great mana, and his image, and they kissed me and said, Blessed be your coming, Hibble, pure mana, Sarziwa, Abad, Ukusar. My uncle, may, or my father, made a Jordan flow, and the mana and his image introduced me to Nitufta. When I saw her, my heart and my inner self rejoiced in pride. The Nitufta introduced me to her own custody and showed me what I have not watched yet. She baptized me in seven mighty inner Jordans flowing under their throne. No one can take the Jordan to uh, look at those pure signs that she spoke about me. And the Nitufta said, Rejoice and be well pleased about this for, of your pure signs, the one I talked about you. I rejoice before her and stretch out adoring. Uh, there she said to me, Go out of uh, your father who is standing in the Jordan waiting for you. I then left Natufta and went to my father. I descended to that first Jordan to the mana and his down to the uh, image. My father baptized me and spoke secret signs about me. 
he baptized me into three hundred and sixty thousand myriads of mighty Jordans of white water. He baptized all the Uthras who were with me, and then he led me up and placed uh, her on the bank of the Jordan of living water. My father asked me and said to me, How did you, my son, have uh, seen her figure in those worlds that you visited? I reported and then uh, taught him about them as I had seen them. His heart hopped, his uh, insides flaunted in joy over what I communicated to him, and he was full of kindness. Who is, he said, to the great mystery who lives with you, who gave life, your father, to you? I bestowed to my father and said to him, You, my father, be blessed and praised as you grant me this enlightenment. Um, that you have. I have gone down to the darkness, and now I have come to the light worlds ascended. I have come to you and been sitting in your society. The secrets that I watched I want to reveal to you and teach you all about them. From every world in which I closed the gates and got their strength and their strength. When I told my father, Manda Dahaya, he laughed at her and exclaimed, What form do these things have in which the darkness consists of? and has have spread then i said to him otherwise there is no such thing in the worlds of darkness and black water i want to get on and go to ruha who am i whom i left behind in that world where there is no one to speak to her it hurts ruha for what i did to her i have put seven walls around her an iron wall in her world which no one can move away from her place then i said to this my father he said break up go quickly step down and do what you want when my father said this, I got up, went, and came to the border of darkness. I put my foot down on the walls and the walls of darkness. They moved in front of me by a thousand miles back. If all my strength were still on me, how could you, the first time I was there, the whole world would not have stood in front of me? I looked and saw Ruha sitting there and said, who he took me into captivity and brought me into this world where I don't know where my parents are. I heard her, laughed at her, and said, What does Ruha say? I appeared to her as her husband Gaff, who is her brother, and spoke to you. Why are you sitting there, Ruha? Then she came up, hugged me, cried in my face, and said, Why did you leave me behind and go away that you have spent me these many years and stayed there? To this I replied to her, I was with my father and my mother. Receive a greeting from them. Then she said, Hail to thee that you saw my father and mother. I got them to see. I said to her, How do they look? She asked me, since I said to her, You are sitting in the dark cloud and in hiding that you created yourself. Then she said, Come on, let's go, go to see them. But I said to her, My parents chased away and said, Beware of coming here. Up, go into your own world. Then she cursed them and said, Fire, eat them, because they are fighting with you. Now I don't like going there anymore. Go to see her. When she said this, I laughed at her. She is now thinking and searching in her soul and in her heart for another mystery and says, I want to open up to my parents and go to enter them and see them. I knew what Ruha was thinking in her heart, but I told her nothing, but left her and ascended to my father, Life, who sent me the out. A thousand years I was with him and stood before him. It hid uh, me and placed me in its egg, in its own society, for a thousand years. Then I said to him, Well, the time is coming when I will go into those the world you know about. My father replied that Life... On go, our firstborn son, who put all the worlds in order. When I left and went there, I found peace again. How she cried. She didn't know who I was. I looked and looked all the way. Then she said, I want to get up and look to find out where the gates of darkness are and will enter in with my parents. She then got up, went there, entered the black water, and she was looking for the gate, but she couldn't find it to enter her parents' house. Since she got up, came, sat down, and said, When will the day be when I shall bear the son, that he may keep me company, that he and I may sit together, that he may be my father, that he may be my mother, that he is my partner, my husband, and my brother, that he may be a support to me who supports me. When he is there, he will not know the gates and under uh, to, to get separated and know where my parents are. Then we want to go, and they look. When she said this, I stayed with her without her knowing it. I, um, 
I said, There will come a day when you, Ruha, will give birth. Your son will be Ur, the giant of darkness. From the day that Ruha said this until the day that I told her when her brother Gaff appeared, she staggered and said, What should I do with that the man who took me away from my parents and made me a prisoner, who takes me away from the place which I came? When Ruha said this, I said to her, How many years has it been that you are pregnant with Ur? Then she said, Oh, two thousand years. Then I said to her, You still have a lot of suffering ahead of you. You, he asked, How many years are there left for me to wear? Then he replied to her, <coughs> I tell her, Seventy thousand myriads of uh, and eleven days you are uh, you are." lost and uh, then will give birth to Ur, the great warlike giant. If you see him at his birth, you will no longer uh, see me. When I told her this, she was cramped in her heart and said, Oh, how long should I carry and carry loads in my body? Then I spoke, to when I am no longer with you, the years will pass quickly. Then she said, Come on, go, you are right. When you're not with me, my heart will find a support, and I will not ask for you. When she said that, I went up to my parents, my father, he hugged me, and his robe, uh, and, and hopped towards me. The mana, he and his, and they said, What have you, beloved son, whose splendor is wondrous, whose form is luminous, and whose uh, miracle of enlightenment that we have created and whose form is set up by us. It supports our sense and knowledge. When my parents spoke to me like this, I stretched out in front of them in adoration in enlightenment, insight and praise as they showed me uh, um, I taught. Then uh, they let me to take in abundance. My glory was their glory. Uh, their shine was my shine. Then they said, by your life, uh, Hibble Yawar, you messenger, tell us how you fared in that world in which you were for so long a time, and we almost forgot about you. Every day we thought and painted before us your form, your splendor, and your face. Your father read a mass for you every day and said, May you, Hibble, Sittle, and Anush, my three brothers, my sons and friends, go up and come here. I talked to them in peace and talked about life and to Mana and his image, where my power is great and uh, your splendor that is extraordinary and great by the power that you have given me and borrowed from the helpers you created for me. What should I be afraid of or fear? In the concealment in which you have sheltered me, I fear I am not afraid of them. A fear does not enter my mind. No, in the trust in you I lived until the day when I came to and none of them spoke to them. Everyone called me our Lord and our King. I took away all your mysteries and took them away from them. They gave me a passport with consideration, the man from whom the plan came to us, that when he is there, he will have a dispute with us. You have the power of enlightenment, of knowledge, and the revelation that is revealed in your sense has created me. You spoke to me, taught me, and planted me. You sent me in that darkness before the mother and father of Ur were there. Even before their parents were, I closed all the gates and moved all the locks that they cannot go to each other. No one goes into the world of others, and no gate will be open to them. Then life my father said to me, O Hibble you are, the messenger of Borgen, of whom his father's hand was laid, and whom we made us, uh, ha we have made equal. If we haven't done this, and you haven't done it in order, we would not have been able to uh, cope with Ur and his mother. When they spoke to me like this, I said to them, I want to go and go to Ruha, who is close to giving birth to Ur. Well done, they said, go and fix it like you used to in, uh, and you when you brought order so i went there arrived and found ruha as she was restless and grieved how she got to the birth pains the day should come on which she was to give birth to her son ur she stood there and uh and uh, wrapped and wound herself. 360 diapers she wrapped by talking. I wrap diapers so that on the day I give birth, I take him from you and you can put one diaper in the other. When she was wrapping the diapers, I said to her, prepare for it, let your month come. However, she did not speak to me. She said, I say to her, your works are worth nothing. Then I left her and set off and left me at the down 
at uh, down of the border i said to myself now the great plan is being realized uh, uh, to, and then uh, yoshamin he was created he arose and created sons i maintained silence and did not speak then ruha went into labor and was supported to marry and was supposed to marry ur the lord of uh, of finsternus and gave birth when she gave birth to him, I saw him, and he resembled a, a little Gimra. I saw him after a thousand years. Ruha took her son and uh, and uh, laid to get him out of the first diaper. In each diaper, he lay for a thousand years. She put him out of one diaper and into another until the last diaper when he had succeeded. He had not lost the garment of his mother's womb. Uh, when he came out of the garment of his mother's womb uh, he fell into the black water he lay there fidgeting then i said now ur was born his mother saw him and he was still very small and seemed grayish to her she didn't know what he will become a great giant uh, greater than the mighty giants his parents i looked at him then i left him and climbed on those iron onto the iron wall i stood on them and spoke in my enlightenment and praised uh, uh, with songs of life my father who gave me and the great mystery that stayed with me I created seven golden walls and surrounded them with a the whole world about every single wall I spoke secret names and secret names like Hamamel, Hathmel, Natrel, Zarzel, Pasrel, and Halsel which no one else is able to move from their place. When I had built those walls and put them in order, then uh, came I there and found him like a worm in the black water. He lay there and fidgeted. I measured it, became its length, and was a span, and its width is one span. Then I said, Now I want to go up. Go and put me at the border place until he grows up and becomes as, as it was said about him when his mother gave him to the great power of darkness. When I happened that he came, uh, when it happened that he became great and strong and grew mighty, I said, "Why am I sitting there? I want to open up. I want to descend and under this black water, uh, create and seal a copper earth, the sick, the thickness of which is eight and a hundred and eighty thousand miles, so that Ur may lean on them." When this is out of my mouth, which had come out of Yawar Hibbel, she arose by itself and straightened out. Then I got up and came to the black water and saw that he was there. Then I said to myself, I want to put my hand over his so that his strength would be shaken and he would no longer grow, because if he grows even more, the whole world will burst from his power and its growth. Then I let the shine and the light from me and dove with the hand over his side. Then he plunged into the black water a thousand myriad miles until he reached it and leaned on the copper earth. From its heaviness and fall a crack appeared in the copper earth, which was twelve thousand miles long and wide, and a quake went through all the worlds of darkness. Then his parents said, Now falls the copper earth and enters and crushes us on the spot. Ur hid himself in that crevice because of the fear he had and the fear he felt. I waited till he was out of the column and the black water came out. I hid my shine from his eyes. Then he said to his mother, What have you done to me? If it grows, you will pass over me with your hand, but I will not. I guessed and I got scared. When his mother rose up and swore to him by her parents that not a, a day was given since I would have run my hand over your side. Uh, however, he fell into evil bitterness and in his anger wanted his own mother to eat. Where are your parents? He asked her. Then she replied to him, On, we want to go to them. Further, she said to him, Come on, I will show you a crown. Put them on your head and you shall be king. From that day on, when you were born, I made it for you. Show them to me that I may see her, he said to her. Then she said to him, Come on, I want to show it to you. It is hidden by the walls. He cast his eye on the crown. He took the crown and put it on his head. Ruha then said to him, Rejoice in your crown, for this crown is your strength. But he spoke to his mother, Mother, don't die a horrible death. I don't want them for me. Take heads, yes, I will take care of them. And he said to her, Come on, show me the gates so we can go to our parents. 
But you replied to him, Before you were born, I was looking for a lot in the world, and I walked around and didn't find the gate. Then he wanted to eat his mother until she ran away from him. You cried and cried, Woe, woe to a son who despises his mother. He ran around uh, the world moaning and could not find the gate to enter. Then he called to his mother and said to her, Fear, don't, do not fear, come on, show me. But she said to him, You believe not my oaths. Then he said to her, Is there a world that has, uh, that has, uh, that has not there is there anyone to whom the parents close the gate in front of their noses and lock it is there a gate through which someone goes out and it does not recognize again is there anyone his parents can turn away and and lock it to which she replied to him am i such a one i am uh, researching and ponder over everything then he asked her is there nothing we could do then she said to him i know high and powerful spells proverbs before which when i say them the earth melts then uh, sp spoke he to her say your spells here and share some of them with me then she said it to him if i give it to you you will learn it tell me he said to her then she said to him come on we want to go to those walls by which your crown lay he left and went with her. They went and came, and she spoke a thousand times a thousand endless and ten thousand times ten thousand numbers, loose sayings without the walls melting. Then he spoke to his mother, Didn't you say I know big and powerful spells? Uh, to which she replied to him, What should I do where I do not know what uh, about uh, what he what came to me and he said to her well uh, do as you would know then she arose and created with her spells and mysteries warlike demons when he saw uh, when he saw her with his eyes he knew that his mother knew great powerful and powerful spells uh, the demons he said to her are to be my helpers he caressed his mother and said to her since you understand these works why did you not create a comrade to this she replied to him my son i told myself that i wanted no one but you then she gave him uh, this uh, she said and caressed and kissed her um, I, Yuar, did not know uh, when I brought them from their place that he understood these works. When she did this, I was invisible, and they did not notice me. Rather, I stood there before them and was hidden from their eyes and saw what they were doing. She said to her son, Well, I want to show you a mirror which I own. Show it to me, uh, he said to her. Then she spoke to him, There, behold, my king and hero. She showed it to him, and he looked at his face in that mirror. He looked at the the worlds of darkness he looked at his parents and he looked at the worlds of light then he looked uh, when he looked like that he curved pulled himself together and stretched uh and stretched not himself his stature curved and he spoke to his mother why have you not given me the mirror to this day um and uh, I have saw my face in it. To this she replied to him, My son, this mirror and the crown, from the moment I came to the heights and my hero brought me up to this place, was your crown, your mirror, and this one Gimra is with me. And I told myself that when you were born they should be yours. She asked him, What did you see, my son? I looked, he said to her, the worlds of my parents. I looked each individual in their own world. I looked at the worlds of light, and he said to me, what shall I do that I should see my parents, that uh, that I the light with my eyes which is not ours? Then she said to him, Show me the mirror that I may enter into it glimpses. He gave it to her, and she saw in it what her son had seen. What should we do now? he asked her. Then she stood there and was enraged because she said, Now I don't know anything. But her heart fell from her because she understood everything. My son, she spoke uh, to he, on your place of origin and on your own parents direct your eyes, but do not make a fight against those worlds of light. When she spoke to him like that, he grabbed her by the hair, pulled her to him. He came up and trampled her underfoot. Then she uttered three hundred and sixty cries with a cry and said to him, Woe, woe, my son, all what you wish to do. Then he said to her, I want to go against this light and fight.
uh, and fight the, uh, the light with the darkness. When Ur spoke this, he cried out against the black water. The black water swirled in front of him in a vortex until it crashed against the walls, and uh, the walls that separate darkness from light and against the walls uh, were knocked out. He raised his voice and let out a cry until all the walls wavered. Then life spoke to me, Yawar, why are you sitting now there, Yawar Hibble, you messenger? Get up, go to Ur the Haughty, Lord of the Darkness. I, Yawar, did not deviate from my father's speech, but left and arrived at Ur, me and the Uthras of my escort and my ten helpers that my father created for me. When Ur the Lord of Darkness saw me in my form, he buried and he got into the black water. I took the crown from his head, put them in seven vestments, and struck my way. Ur came out of the black water and spoke to his mother, Who was it that went against me? Um, she replied to him, This one who has gone against you has gone to kill you. Then he asked his mother, Is there anyone who, uh, who will be able to subdue me? To which his mother replied, When you have grown up to this man, whose strength is his splendor? Why can't you take your crown from him? When his mother spoke thus to him, he threw his hands on his head and cried, Woe, woe, he bent and did not stretch, and he said to his mother, He grabbed me so that the vertebra of my back broke. When he spoke thus to his mother, she wept and moaned over him. Then he jumped up from his throne and said to her, What about, uh, what about, uh, me that will it that is to become then he got up and came in anger and rage with a thousand myriad devas and approached his companion but when they saw me they they died and passed and became as if they had never been there then he jumped up angrily and struck his way he entered the black water and came in and called countless devas he called a deva who was as tall as he was and met me again but when the devas caught sight of me they died even those who were otherwise with him he looks behind him and in front of him and says what should i do then his mother said to him you are the power of this uh, this light that is not grown. It is not me, he said to her. Where is my strength that is great? If you can, she said to him, get up. We want to go to the walls and shake them away from their place. Then he spoke. He said to his mother, come on, let's go. They went there. When he wanted to move the walls, they uh, were, and he was ashamed in front of his mother. Then she spoke to him, There is no one to move these walls away from their place. For many years I have mumbled a magic murmur without the walls uh, melting together. Then he said to his mother, What shall I do? He replied, uh, She told him, A certain pearl belongs to you. Put it on your head, then it will be your strength and will increase. When she brought the pearl and put it on his head, he shouted, that the black water then the water swirled and ran away from him then he said i want to go to the light to the great spring of water and rise up but i yawar appeared to him in that robe and he shrank together and fell down in front of me i grabbed that pearl that his mother gave to him with which he flaunted and lifted it up then i left him and went to my parents who lived with me then he said to his mother, Woe, woe, mother, alas, our strength and our strength have been taken from us. Then she spoke to him, My son, you can't do anything against this man. Furthermore, she said to him, Well, we want to enter the black water and look for the gimra that is within me. When it comes to the water and falls, the black water boils. Then we'll see what we should do. He and his mother then entered the black water, and I, Yawarziwa, entered behind them. Ruha then fetched Gimra out of its interior, and it fell into the black water. The black water boiled and swirled until the gap became visible, which was formed by the severity of the earth that had arisen. And then he spoke to his mother, Mother, look at the gap that has created when I fell down when you were with the hand over me. She saw that gap and was over it. Calm down, I, Yawar, blinded and confused Ruha, and took before her that Gimra away. She looked for it, but could not find it. She complained. She, hitting her hands against her head, shouted, Woe, woe, our sorcery and witchcraft are lost, and speech and hearing became our speaking. She cried and she cried, and they uprooted the earth by uh, their excitement. He rose out of the black water and spoke to his mother, I will rise up and make war.